It is my pleasure to introduce the next speaker, Anna Lucia Garcia Polida from University of Liverpool, and she's presenting a talk entitled on the non-existence of lower dimensional sympathetically algebras. Thank you. And um, thank you very much for the opportunity to talk uh, in this conference. It's, it's, yeah, it's a great chance to speak. Thank you. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you about um, this class of algebras called sympathetically algebras and some methods that we developed and the theory we, we developed to classify a low dimensional such algebras. Uh, and this is joint work with Gil Salgado from um, Universidad Autónoma de San Luis Potosí. Um, okay, so I'll start with an overview of sympathetically algebras and um, first uh, recall that, well, I'll, I'll take G to be a Lie algebra, which is finite dimensional, and recall that if G is semi-simple, then um, G has three properties. So its center is zero, and the second property is that uh, G is, is perfect. So the first derived ideal is equal to G. And then um, the third property is that the derivations, which I denote by at G, the ones that come from the bracket or the inner derivations are equal to the whole space of derivations, or basically it, it has got no outer Derivation. That's another way to say this. Um, so, Angelopoulos in the mid '80s uh, asks whether these three properties completely characterize semi-simple algebras. Um, and well, the answer to this is no. In 1988, Angelopoulos himself built um, an example of a non semi simple Lie algebra that satisfies one, two, and three. Um, so then, these algebras indeed give us a new class of algebras that contain uh, properly the semi simple Lie algebras. Um, so then we're going to call the algebras that satisfy one, two, and three uh, sympathetically algebras. And when I say non-trivial example, I mean a uh, sympathetically algebra that is non-semi-simple. So non-trivial examples were given by Angelopoulos. So this first one that he constructed was of the dimension 35 in 1988. And then Benayadi constructs an example of dimension 48 in 1993. And then finally, Benayadi again uh, constructs an example of dimension 25. Um, but at this point, uh, very few examples were found. And um, these examples were constructed somehow using the same type of technique. So they didn't differ much from the previous examples. Um, and this leads us to the question of what is the smallest possible dimension that a non-semi-simple non -semi sympathetically algebra can attain. The smallest known is this example by Benajadi, this 1996. Um, and then um, Jay Simon, so Benajadi attributes uh, this result to Jay Simon that if G is sympathetic, then its dimension must be greater or equal to 10. But this example, this, sorry, this result is not in the literature. It was uh, communicated privately to Benajadi. So um, theory was developed uh, to describe some structural properties. 
So Angelo Plus had uh, like the proved a lot of structural results and Benayadi and many more people. And one of these results is that a uh, sympathetic Lie algebra can be decomposed into sympathetic direct factors. So this gives us a sense of uh, minimality um, and, and like, well, the, this, this tells us a lot that sympathetically algebras can, can have like some sense of minimality. And, but this was not sufficient to show uh, the existence or the non-existence of these algebras in low dimensions. So why was this is because at that time, the knowledge of classification of Lie algebras was very limited. And as I said in one of my previous uh, slides, uh, the properties one, two, and three were meant to be uh, another characterization of semi-simple Lie algebras. And um, another reason why this, is, this was a hard problem um, is because the computational tools were almost inexistent. So to check property, if to to check if property three holds, so to check if the derivations, the space of derivations equals the the space of inner derivations, one has to um, solve n to the cube equations just to calculate the the dimension of the space of derivations, and so for dimension equals to twenty five we're talking about 15,000 equations and with no computational uh, tools, no software or anything of the sort. Um, and so, well, now from here onwards, this is new work joined with Gil Salgado. And I'm going to start by considering um, this Lie algebra G and it's a uh, Levy Maltsev decomposition where this H is the radical and uh, GL, the Levy Maltsev uh, factor, is simple. And I also decompose the radical into GL simple modules that I'll call V and I. And um, well, I uh, we can observe that. Um, with this choice of, of Levy Maltsev factor, then uh, the Lie algebra cannot be further decomposed into sympathetic, like into proper sympathetic factors, like the ones that Benayadi mentioned. And so it's minimal in that sense. And I will describe now what the multiplicative structure then that one such G must have. So um right so by definition uh, these are gl simple modules so then they are invariant uh, under the gl action and so then we can start here filling our our table and uh, putting that this has to be contained in in vn1 and so on and moreover by schurz lemma we have that the product of GL with each of these simple modules is either the whole of the simple module or zero. So then we start filling in our table again. And um, what more? Ah, yes. So then using the fact that um, the center of G is zero, then we get that the dimension of these each of these VNIs has to be greater uh, than one because the and because the scalars commute with everything, and in particular, this implies that uh, this product is equal to the whole of the VNI. So then we can erase the zero that we had over here. And we continue with this. 
and um, we see that if G is perfect, then H, the radical, is going to be nilpotent. So over here, we're going to have an nilpotent Lie algebra. Um, then we can reorder each of these simple um, modules in a way that um, the product in the radical of the ith module is contained only in the sum of the subsequent ones. So for example, here in the VN2, the product of VN2 with the whole of H is going to be contained only in the next ones. So that's what I have over here. And um, finally, we can observe that the product of each of these two, of, of, of any of these two simple modules is GL equivariant because that's the Jacobi identity. And we will assume that the product of any two gives us at most one of these simple modules is either zero or it's equal to one of these simple modules. Um, right. And so this, uh, the composing like this gives us also a way to bound the dimension of G and to try to find what is the minimum uh, that we can get. So for example, if we get the smallest simple Lie algebra, which is SL2C, then we get that um, the dimension of G is going to be, well, this formula that I wrote here, uh, it's just the sum of the dimensions plus the dimension of SL2C. But the less uh, number of, of uh, simple modules, then the more possibilities I will have. So can we rule out any small n? Um, like if we want to find the smallest g, then we look for partitions of n elements, these uh, capital N elements, um, of dimensions less or equal to 25. And so, The theorem is that um, if we have a sympathetic Lie algebra, then with GL simple, then we must have at, at least four uh, GL simple modules in the decomposition of the radical. And this gives us a lower bound uh, for the dimension of G, which is 15. But still, um, having, a, even if we have four, a partition of four elements uh, to make up to dimension 25, it's still a lot of partitions. Um, so we prove that restricted to four, uh, uh, to a radical that decomposes into four GL simple modules, then if we have a sympathetic Lie algebra, there exist two, old, uh, two modules that I will put under the reordering that is VN3 and VN4, such that the first derived ideal of the radical is equal to precisely those two modules. So it can only have um, like, yeah. And, we also show that up to isomorphism, there are only six multiplicative structures that are possible for G sympathetic. Um, right. So then um, the next um, result is that we show that if you take um, GL to be a uh, simple but uh, a simple algebra but not SL2C then it's and G is sympathetic then its dimension is greater than 25. So there's no sympathetic Lie algebras with uh, Levy-Maltzev factor 
different than SL2C with dimension less than 25. And there's also not any sympathetically algebras of dimension less than 25 if you have levi maltsev uh, factor SL2C. Because, so we show that the dimension has to be greater or equal than 25 in this setting, but if you have dimension equals to 25, then G is unique up to isomorphism. And this algebra here, this unique one, is precisely that example that Benayari gives. Um, now, theorem two, three, part one, and most of part three, but most of theorem three, part uh, two, were uh, theoretical results. So we have our theorems, but with all the theorems that we have, we still have four cases to check directly. And um, for this, we developed an algorithm that allowed us to, uh, yeah, to check whether the remaining cases were sympathetic or not. And I'll describe those now. So the input was a, a partition of four elements, which are the, the, these and i's, and then we checked that, that the dimension had to be less or equal than 25. Um, we construct a candidate Lie algebra. For this, we have to construct explicitly the SL2 equivariant maps that uh, constitute the bracket between simple modules using the representation theory of SL2C. And we verify whether a G is a Lie algebra. So we check that Jacobi is satisfied and um, it in, in this case, the symmetry is satisfied by construction. Um, and um, if it's a Lie algebra, then we construct the space of derivations and check whether the dimension of the space of derivations coincides with the dimension of the space of inner derivations. If that is true, then we can conclude that G is a sympathetically algebra and Otherwise, we say that G is not sympathetic. And so um, this gives us a systematic um, approach to study uh, other types of algebras. And so our work in progress is that we are uh, using uh, this approach to study importantly algebras. And um, that's all for me. Thank you for your attention.